Welcome to Commander Central, episode 176. And today we're going to take a look at decks submitted to Max for Make Max a Deck. I'm Dana. And I'm Max. And it's just us again this week. Uh, Chris got hurt again. He fell up some stairs this time. Um, <laughs> I didn't push him. <laughs> I want to make that very clear. I did not push him. <laughs> and no, he didn't. He actually has the flu. He messaged us earlier. Um, so he is, he's home feeling terrible. The the plague has hit our LGS. It has hit yes. Wisconsin. I am literally surrounded by a Lysol bubble at work. I, I have managed, like, because I work from home, I've kind of avoided it. But everyone in my office has been sick as well. So I've, I've, I've ducked it thus far. But hopefully that will maintain because it sounds just terrible. Yeah. So... We're going to talk about, we had we had kind of a thing where people submitted a bunch of decks for Max to make his his new deck for 2020, and we're going to look at a bunch of those lists a little bit later on. Uh, but first, Max, any fun games this week? Oh, yeah, we, we played a handful of games. We had a listener, Matt Jorgensen, uh, visit our shop, D20, here in Eau Claire. We did. It, it was great to meet him. He was on vacation this week, and he's from about a couple hours away, so it was nice to put a face to the name that we see in Slack all the yeah. time and on Twitter. A lot of fun to play with him. I got to uh, scumbag you out of an early victory. <laughs> you did. And then you still end up winning that game. Yeah, you 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 kept me from killing a bunch of Chris's Planeswalkers um, with a... I don't remember what I did. I don't even remember what the specifics Master, were. Uh, it's the one where you could have turned all your artifacts into like five fives based on the highest Oh yeah, CMC. yes. A master for replication? Yes. Um, yeah, so he declared bl no blocks because it was just one, you know, chumps coming in and I went and turned to turn them all into something else and then Max counterspelled it. I, I packed and negationed it. So yeah, that uh, that did save Chris. <laughs> the the salt flowed out of your eyes. You like <laughs> you. <laughs> that one. Hurt. Well, I I did pay you back, not necessarily spitefully, but we had a game after that, or was it, no? It was actually the same game. It was that same game. The that same game, game took game. two hours. Yeah, where where twice the first time you just kind of were forgot that a spell skite can take auras. Because you were playing your Tuvasa deck, yep, and you went to put an, uh, a Bear Umbra, I believe it was, on your Tuvasa. Yep. It was like I, turn two, turn three. It was, pre also. It was pretty early, and I and I stand it with a spell skite. And then later on in the game, you went to cast, which the problem then is like, you know, it was it was funny to snag the first one, but then you're in a position where you just can't cast auras at an aura deck as long as the spell skite sells. So I'll just take all of them, right? Um, so that really kind of put you at a at a loss there for several turns where you couldn't do anything eventually the spell sky went away and later on you went to start casting auras on tuvasa again and i happened to have a scarecrow out and was able to at instant speed activate it to bring the spell sky back into play and grab i think it was a shielding plaques from you yes it was so um i i there, there was definitely a lot of um uh scumbaggery going on back and forth in that game in the end, I think you won that game. Um, I did. I think I did. I know Matt won at least one. I think he won the one where he was playing his uh, Joyra Weatherlight Captain deck. Uh, um, Sisse Weatherlight Captain. Sorry, Sisse Weatherlight Captain. Um, so he won that game, and I don't remember if Chris won. Did Chris win? Chris won a Mogus one as well. I think we all won a game. I did not. You did not. <laughs> that's why. That's why we're building you a new deck, Max. Yes, exactly. <laughs> or maybe Max just needs to pay more attention. That could be. <laughs> that could be. So yeah, that was a, we had a good time. Um, so if, and if it, this is always true to anyone who, who listens, if you happen to be in town, our shop's easy to find. We play on Tuesdays. You are absolutely welcome to stop in and, and look for a game. Yeah, you can typically find it at least Chris easily. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> people always just hear him laugh and can track him down. Yeah. Something he's not sick or otherwise injured anyway. And and don't believe him when he says no, I'm not that guy. He's they don't he I, he doesn't play here because he's done that to people before. He's just blatantly lied before us to see if anyone has noticed. If you would like to reach out to us to tell us that you're going to be in town playing a game or just want to say hi or or tell us basically anything, how would you do that, Max? We are on Twitter at CMDR Central. You can Facebook search us CMDR Central. Um, we're on YouTube where you can hear all of our audio and eventually see our beautiful faces once a week. Uh, by searching CMDR Central. You can find us over on patreon.com slash CMDR Central, where if you are so inclined to support us financially, to buy me pants, and you could have participated in this Build Max's First Deck of the Year challenge, uh, head over there. Uh, you know, the Decks You Play series, that's a big reward people like. So 
we always appreciate all the support we get from our patrons. So that's another great place to find us. Yes, indeed. You can also find us on FlipsideGaming.com. Head over to FlipsideGaming.com and use promo code CMDR in all caps to get 10% off all orders, $10 or more, including all those awesome Theros Beyond Death cards and packs and boxes. So speaking of Theros, let's talk about that just for a moment here. Uh, You did not play in a pre-release, right? I don't think either of us did. I didn't either. I intended to go. We had a snowstorm on a Friday night, and I was just... And I probably could have got through it. It wasn't that terrible, but I was like, eh... I just won't. I'll just wait and go Sunday or something. And then my kid wanted to do something on Sunday, so I was like, well, I'll just hang out with him instead. So I didn't play. You didn't play. Um, have you got any singles or anything ordered, though? I have ordered a, a handful of signals for, singles uh, from Card Kingdom just because Flipside did not have them available when I went to do pre-ordering. Oh, sure. They should be here hopefully early next week, and I'm currently in an, in an auction with uh, Ryan Peniff over at Commander Cookout podcast Facebook page for some uh, cards I already ordered because I want to fully alter that to Vasa deck. Yeah, I saw he, because he, I think all the cards he put up this week are all alters from the new set from Theros Beyond Death. Correct. So, and he did some really nice ones. So yeah, um, I got my first order done. I, I basically picked up all the stuff that was relatively cheaply priced. Um, I didn't even start digging into things like my foil deck where I'm probably going to want to pick up like the the <laughs> promo version ones. And I'm like, I'm not even, those are always so overpriced right away. I won't even deal yeah. with that. I'll, I'll wait several weeks, if not longer, to pick those up when the price has really stabilized. But yeah, I picked up probably three quarters of the cards I need for it. Um, there's a good bit of changes. It's I think it's a really solid set for Commander. And everyone seems really happy with how it's been playing, and at least in limited and stuff so far. So I think we're off to a good start here in 2020. I mean, there's no Oko in the set, so there, there, yet. There, maybe there, there is. Isn't. Maybe there there's, is, and we haven't found it yet. Yeah, that could be, because everyone was no, no one was really aware of how busticated that card was right away. That took a <laughs> few weeks anyway. So yeah, who knows? There could be a new one. I'm, I'm hoping not, <laughs> but I guess it really isn't that big of a deal in Commander. Uh, we also had the ban list for Commander had an, had an update this week. In, in effect, it was no update. There was nothing added to it. Um, we will mention this, though. They did actually update their website for the first time since 1987, I think, was the last time that had been updated. It's no longer a really bad PHP site. <laughs> yeah, so, so it, looks, it looks good. They did a nice job there. So you can go check out the new um, the official Commander website. It's at mtgcommander.net. And there's there's the old stuff that used to be there, but they, there's some some updates. It's actually It looks good, and there's actually a little more content. So it's worth going to check out, even if there wasn't anything on the uh, ban list that changed this time through. I'll also mention that um, one of the guests we had about a month or so ago, um, Charlotte Sable, who is on the CAG, wrote a really um, good blog post on her Tumblr site, which is jqlgirl.tumblr.com, where she basically broke down a lot of the thinking behind the fact that they didn't ban bla- ban Flash this time through. That was kind of the expected card. This EDH community was very concerned about the, the interactions with Flash and, and Hulk, particularly given the new um, Thassa's Oracle. So there was a lot of concern about that. So she wrote a really nice blog post explaining kind of their thinking. Even if you disagree, she does a really good job going into what the thought process was. So that's totally worth checking out. That was at jqlgirl.tumblr.com. Yeah, that, that definitely wasn't a, a great read. And yeah. Charlotte was awesome to have on the show a few weeks back. Uh, and, you know, I think we this is a great time to say thank you to all the guests that uh, appeared on our show. Yes. To fill in for Chris when he was on the IR there. And, yeah, that, uh, that was super cool. People just volunteering to come on. Um, that was awesome. We had a lot of help, and that means a lot. Yeah. And, and I think we're going to have Charlotte back on here at some point this spring, too. We did a show um, last year where we talked about, like, weird rules interactions in Commander. And as she's a judge, she'd be a good person to have on. We talk about that. We, we wanted to do another show on that topic down the road. So I think we're going to have her back on when we do that at some point here this spring. But, yes, again, that was fantastic having people reach out to us and, and um, really helpful to have people sub for us. So this community has been great. Thank you all very, very much. For sure. Okay, Max, should we look at a few of these decks here? We should, but I think let's, uh, it's been a while since we've talked about this, sure. so I'm going to quickly go over the idea. Okay. Um, as our listeners know, and Dana, you know, I am not a brewer. I don't like building yes. decks. I maybe build one deck a year, uh, if I'm lucky. I might sketch a bunch out on Architect or Deck Stats, 
but maybe only one makes it to paper a year. So my idea this earlier in December of 2019, I was thinking like, you know, let's get our patrons involved. Let's get our listeners involved and let's have them build me a deck. So my, my challenge to our patrons was I want you guys to build me a deck. And I had some criteria. It either had to be Rakdos or Gruul, because those are two color combinations I don't play. Okay. Um, it has to have multiple paths to victory, because that's we talk about that all the time on the show. Yep. Two card combos are fine, because I'm a scumbag. <laughs> um, but the budget has to be between 300 and like $350. I was a little flexible, because this challenge is now almost two months old, and cards vary in price you know spikes happen right. yep um and you know no outrageous reserve list cards i might upgrade the mana base if i have the dual land that fits the deck you know stuff like that but sure uh and then my my caveat to all this was i'm gonna pick a deck i'm gonna build it and i'm gonna bring it to every magic fest command fest i attend and if our listeners play with me they can say hey i want to play against the the 2020 deck and i'll i'll play that deck against them and i'm gonna have our listeners sign a card when I play against them. That will that will stay in the that deck. Stay like in the sign deck. card of the deck. Yep. That's what a great idea all around. Um I'll I'll make updates with all the sets that come out, you know, okay. like I would with any of my other decks. And then the the finishing touches at the end of this year, so at the beginning of twenty twenty one, I want to make a carbon copy of it and we're gonna give it away. What a good idea, Max. You're 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 clever. I try. That's why we keep it's, you around. This is, I, I used my one good idea in January. <laughs> he used it up right away, so now you're, the rest of the year, you got nothing. Yep, it's all on Chris now. That's the way you do it, though. Put, it, yeah, put all, the, all the pressure on him and I. <laughs> so the first deck we have here um, is uh, Nakia of the Old Ways deck that was submitted by uh, listener Cable. So why don't you tell us what this deck looks like? So this deck looks like what I would expect a Nikki of the Old Ways deck to look like. It has 35 lands and 64 creatures and then Nikia. It's really leaning heavily into the you can't cast non-creature spells. And you know what? I, I really like it. I've We've had a couple Nikia decks come through the shop uh, over the past year. You know what? This card came out in War of the Spark? Or, no, yeah, Ravnica uh, Allegiance. Um, Ravnica, uh, no, it would have been the Guilds. The, Guild, yeah, the second one. Or the no, the second one, it's Allegiance. So, Allegiance, okay. Yep. You know, this is exactly kind of speaks to my 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 spirit. I don't have an aggro deck at all. A lot of my decks are either control or they grind out games or battle cruiser magic. This deck really does both the uh, aggro and the battle cruiser magic because there's giant creatures like an Apocalypse Hydra, the the Fiendish Duo from the uh, the Take Home game, you know, that they do every year. Uh, a bunch of hydras. It's just big creatures that are gonna smash face. And there's a, a lot of the the even the the spells you would want removal spells are, are ones that are basically baked into creature bodies here. Yeah. So like there's a duplicant. I think there's a whip tongue hydra. Yeah. I mean there's tons of everything you would want in a deck is somehow on stapled onto a body. What about you, Dana? Do you have any thoughts on this deck? Um, you know what? The only thing I would probably do if I had it would be to run Genesis Wave, or not Genesis Wave, excuse me, um, Primal Surge as the one spell, just because, you know, <laughs> at some point you're going to have it in hand and Nikki's not out and you're just going to cast it and put your entire deck into play. Um, but yeah, it's it's cool. I, I like things like this where someone's really committed to a theme. So I'm a fan of this kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely agree with the Genesis Wave. My other thought would be the only one spell I would run would be. Um... Finale of Devastation. Oh, to just go get some just, big just giant thing too. Go, go get some big yeah. giant thing and win. All right, so we've got Wart here, submitted by uh, listener Dan Kraus. Yeah, um, and, and past guest of the show, Dan Kraus. Correct. Um, I I want to mention that Dan also submitted a Corvald deck. He tried to really get me to play another three color <laughs> deck, um, and my my response to him was, I know how to build Corvald. <laughs> like, and I don't need another, like, attrition type deck. That's kind of sure. what RK already does. So I do appreciate Dan putting together, showing me, he essentially gave me his Corvald deck with a lower budget. Okay. Um, so I appreciate that, Dan, but that one's going to get passed by. But we will look into the Wart deck here. Okay. So the Wart deck, uh, and I'll quick read Wart the Raid Mother because she's relatively old at this point. Um, four Gruel Gruel for legendary creature Goblin Shaman. When Wart enters the battlefield, create two 
one one red and green goblin warrior creature tokens and each red or green instant or sorcery spell you cast has conspire meaning you can tap um two untapped creatures you control that share a color with the spell and if you do copy the spell you may choose two targets for the copy so i've seen a lot of different war decks over the years this one seems to be leaning pretty heavily into a like a token goblin theme it's there's a lot of goblins here but it's also built very much around making tokens it looks like yeah very much so very heavily into the goblins there are some non-goblins and those are the creatures that pretty much devour so there's a myo cloth there's a dragon brood mother years ago i contemplated building a wart deck i tried to do like wart infect because you could you know conspire the infect yep. pump spells um the token route is really cool because you can you know Copy your Hordling Outburst or your Dragon yep. Fodder and stuff like that to pump out tokens faster, um, which I think is really cool. Yeah. Um, my only hesitancy with this deck is I already kind of have a token deck. Oh, sure. With Art with Regna and Krav, so it yep. would be either having two token decks, which I'm not opposed to, or maybe changing Regna and Krav into more of a, a life gain, life loss deck more than the token theme. Okay. So... And, you know, I, I like Wart as well, but, like, six is a lot for a commander, particularly in a token deck. I, I, I agree. I do, I do appreciate that this deck probably could survive without Wart all the time. I, yes, but for sure. Wart, Wart is probably not the main cog in the machine, but it's definitely a big cog in the machine. It's also the kind of deck that does have some pretty decent upgrades down the road. You could build this and then down the road, put in a doubling season, things along that lines to, to give you more power if you wanted to soup it up. But it's probably placed pretty well out of the box with a not, you know, crazy expensive budget right now. Right. His notes do say Throwmock is the hidden commander technically in the deck. Yes. And I think it said it started out originally as a Throwmock deck, I believe. I, I bet it did. All right, the next one on the list here, um, we have a Grand Warward Rada deck submitted by patron supporter Bruno. Uh, Grand War Warward Rada, two red and a green for a elf warrior with haste, and whenever one or more creatures you control attack, add that much mana in any combination of red or green mana to your pool. Until end of turn, you don't lose mana as steps and phases end. So if you swing with five creatures, you can add, you know, five mana. If you swing with ten creatures, you can add ten. Swing with one, you had one. Um, I've seen a couple different Rada decks in the shop as well, um, and I've played against a couple different Rada decks at various GPs. Um, what is this deck trying to do, Max? This is pure aggro, is what it looks like it to me. It seems like it's, it's stuff that's just going to hit you in the face, you taking advantage of haste, things along those lines. Yep. There are some token producers, like an Awakening Zone, um, but it's just about making... A bunch of bodies and a bunch of mana, it looks like, because there's like a nature's will and a druid's repository. And there's just a couple uh, really big endgame spells, you know, like Sandworm Convergence, um, yep. you know, Relentless Assault. You know, there's some extra combat steps in this deck. Um, this is a really cool deck. It, You know, I've always, I think you've tried the extra combat step stuff in the past. And I think, I think this is the deck that might be able to pull it off. Yeah, I think so, especially because even there, there's things in here like um, uh, Breath of Fury, which is an enchantment from the original Ravnica set, that it's an, it's an aura that goes on a creature you control, and when that creature deals combat damage to a player, you can sacrifice it and put Breath of Fury on, an on, on a different creature, and then you get a different an additional combat step. So basically, as long as you can hit with a creature, you can keep moving the, that to another creature and keep getting combat steps going. And there are so many things in this deck that make tokens either you know at the beginning of combat or like during the process of attacking that it's pretty easy you could probably chain three or four or five or more combat steps just with that one card in this deck fairly easily yeah i totally agree it also runs some of my favorite token kind of core pieces like eldrazi monument and throne of the god pharaoh um so that those cards really speak to me and this deck is this deck is really interesting and it's definitely uh one I really like. Yeah, and you, and you have backup win conditions here, whether it's things like Impact Tremors, Goblin Bombardment, so you have ways to you know get damage through outside of the combat step as well. So it, has a, it, has, it, it plays in a lot of different directions, which is pretty useful sometimes. Yeah, totally true. What's next? Uh, next, we have a Lysolda Love Deck submitted by patron supporter Chris Dorson. 
Uh, so Lysolda the Blood Witch, for those who don't remember, is from the original, original Ravnica block. I believe it's Dissension. Yes, I think so. Uh, it's one black and a red for a legendary creature, Human Cleric. She's a 3-1 and has an activated ability for two generic mana, Sacrifice a Creature. It deals two damage if the Sacrifice Creature was red, and you draw a card if the Sacrifice Creature was black. So you're either going to get value or you're going to hit somebody for a little bit of damage. Or, or a creature, I guess. So you have a shock available or you draw a card. Yep. And again, this is this looks like a, a pseudo-reanimator deck. There's a lot of stuff that can be returned from the graveyard, like a Bloodgast, uh, some reassembling skeleton stuff, some token makers. There's the, the Zulupart Cutthroat Blood Artist type cards. You know, just really uh, not stacksy, but it is kind of a... It looks like it could really combo off quickly if possible. Yeah. And, you, you know, you're taking advantage of the, the creatures you're going to be killing and bringing back by putting a bunch of co- counters on things like Black Market. And you're, you know, making tokens every upkeep to have available to sacrifice to things like Dreadhorde Invasion. Um, you know, Grave Pack to take advantage of all the sacrificing you're doing. Impact Tremors to deal damage and Perforos to deal damage when you bring all these things back into play or when you make the tokens. Um, so it's not leaning too hard again into one specific thing. It's just trying to spread a lot of damage around a lot of different ways that all kind of interface with the commander in an intuitive way. Yeah, for sure. And I, I, I'm a fan of Lysolda. I had a Lysolda deck once upon a time. Um, I've kind of been tinkering with making it again. So I like the card. (laughs) Um, it it wouldn't, it's the one I'm making looks a little bit different than this, but I, I do like it. It's an interesting way to play that commander. The biggest problem tends to be win conditions, but I think this one with a go wide effect, and like I said, having impact tremors, peripherals, those kind of things, at least do give you some ways to poke that damage through. Uh, the next one on the list here, we have another uh, Nikia of the Old Ways deck. Um, this one is also submitted by by Dorson, and this is a pretty creature heavy deck, like you'd expect from from Nikia. Um, but not as much as you sometimes see. Um, why don't you tell us what this one does, Max? Yeah, so there are, it looks like there are 40 uh, non-enchantment creatures. Um, but then there are another 23 enchantment creatures in the deck. So it gets around Nikia's claws because they're all enchantment creatures. You right. Know? So, you know, your stuff like Eidolana Blossoms is a draw engine because half of, you, about a third of your creature base our enchantments as well. A lot of the stuff in here is actually from the new Theros set, which is really cool. Yeah, there's a real, like, it almost feels like a weird creature enchantress deck to a degree. Yeah, very much so. Um, And again, it has the the type of cards that have removal baked in, like a world breaker, um, which, you know, is a a really fun card to play. I loved playing that back in standard, so. Yeah, um, another solid solid Nikki deck. And, And you are somebody who tends to play with the intent of doing things in the combat step. So you're perfectly comfortable with winning that way. And and there's finishers in here that play into that. Things like Crater Hoof, Enraiser, Forerunners, Kamal. So you have the overrun effects on bodies here that you can still cast with Nikia. Um, yeah, it's th- th- there's a ton of mana dorks here too. I think like 18 it looks like. Yeah. That's I mean, pretty cool. You, wait, it got to ramp somehow if you can't cast uh, Cultivate and Kodama's Reaches. That's absolutely true. So the big difference definitely between this and the previous Nikia deck is all the enchantment creatures really is kind of striking. It, it's very striking and very unique, honestly, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, it's something I would not have thought of uh, in the first place. Yes, I wouldn't have either. I definitely like that take for sure. All right, what's next? Uh, next is uh, Dark Lord Funk Gonna Give It To You by <laughs> Matt Jorgensen. Uh, so this is a Greven Prater, Prater Captain EDH deck, uh, Grevin from this most recent Commander pre-cons from yep, 2019. the, the Rakdos Commander. Uh, he's three red-black for a 5-5. Five, five. He has Menace. Uh, Grevin Praetor Captain gets plus X plus O, where X is the amount of life you have lost this turn. And when he attacks, you may sacrifice a creature. If you do, draw cards equal to that creature's power, and you lose life equal to that creature's toughness. So it's just a way to pump Grevin during the combat step. So there's a little bit of a gimmick here in terms of the creature count. There's a bunch of ball lightning type creatures here. Yeah, so you're going to... Including the actual original ball lightning. Yeah. Uh, So, I mean, you're going to ball lightning, you draw six, and you gain, you put one more power on Grevin. Yep. 
So the, the downside with these type of creatures is you're going to draw a ton of cards, but you're not going to buff Greven as much as you usually see somebody do in a Greven deck. Right. It's not like I'm sacking a big 6-6 six, six demon, right. you know, and drawing six, losing six, and making Greven an 11-5. Eleven, an 11, right. You're just going to draw a ton and still hit for five or six, which is pretty decent with Greven. Yeah. Um, what I do like about this deck, though, there are other sack outlets. Yes. Um, You know... So that's nice. So you can get that engine going. I don't know if any of them really make you lose life, though, like Grevin does. That's kind of the hard part. You know, losing yeah. the life is what pumps him. Yep. So there are some key cards in here. You have your Phyrexian Arena. So that's going to be automatically one extra point of uh, power onto your, your commander. There's a Hatred. That's a great card. I've played that in an old Lycia deck. Mm-hmm. And all the, the constant black draw, you know, where you lose X life, draw X card. So... It's a it's an interesting, not your typical Greven deck like we've seen maybe out in the yeah. wild. And there's a few kind of like fling type effects, things like the actual original fling, souls fire, um, things that do direct damage based on the creature being big, which this one is going to be pretty big quite frequently. There's things like Teamer Battle Rage that give you double strike as kind of a combat trick. Um, so there's a few different combat trick things in here. And there's an Imp's Mischief, which is always <laughs> fun to see in a deck, the black counter spell. Yeah. So, always fun to see pop up. Lighting Skelemental, great new card that was in Modern Horizons. That's in here as one of the kind of ball lightning effects. Um, yeah, it, this this is a little bit like a Rakdos version of the um, a Crush deck I play. Very, very much so. Yep. Uh, all right. Next up here, we have um, another Matt Jorgensen submitted deck. This is Boroi Borgmos Enraged. Angry Bobo. Angry Bobo. Um, four red, red, green, green. So eight mana for Borbo for a Cyclops who has Trample. He's a 7-6. Whenever he deals combat damage to a player, reveal the top three cards of your library and put all land cards revealed this way into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. And you can discard a land card to have Borbo deal three damage target creature or player. So basically you're just pitching lands to Lightning Bolt people. Exactly. Um... I've played against Bobo decks in the past. Uh, our good friend Patrick Sapola has one. Yep. Um, Bobo is, I don't know if he's still kind of like a kill on site commander, but I think for me he is. I always am hesitant when someone sits down with Bobo because you know what's going to happen. Yes. Um, that being said, this is a this is a play style I don't typically do. Like I, I like to ramp, but I don't typically want a bunch of stuff in my hand. Right. Yeah, you, you want to use put the lands in play to use them for a thing. You're not, not looking to discard them. Yeah, so I, I, I like this deck that in the fact that it's going to make me try a play style I've never really played before. So that that's definitely the interesting bunch. But talk about there are every, I think every ramp card that is possibly in <laughs> Magic yeah. is in this deck. And um, 50 lands. Half the deck is lands. Yep. Which, which you, it makes, which you, it, yeah, mm-hmm. you kind of need that in this kind of deck. Yeah. Totally makes sense. All right, next up. Um, we have a Grumgully Humans Tribal deck, which was submitted by Alex Cook, but I believe this is kind of based on another deck. Is that correct? So, so yeah, the next two decks we're gonna we're gonna talk about kind of conjointly here because okay. uh, our editor Rafael Garcia put together the list that Alex's deck is based off of. It's just with some tweaks, essentially. So it's Grumgully Human Tribal, and when I first heard them talk about this, I'm like. Grumgully doesn't care about humans. Yeah. This what are you guys doing? This is literally like you are trolling me. <laughs> and, and we'll read that specifically. Grumgully, one red green for a goblin shaman who's a 3-3. Each other non-human creature you control enters a battlefield with an additional plus one counter on it. So it only affects non-humans. So it seems strange to be a deck filled with humans. Very much so. And then you start looking at all those humans and you realize that all the humans in this deck make tokens that are not humans. Literally every single one of them. Yes. And I I don't know why, but I saw that. I'm like, this is hilarious. And I actually got to see Raphael do some testing on Moto, I think. Yep. And it 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 looks fun. It was a lot of fun to see some of the results he was getting. So I think we'll talk about each deck here a little bit. Um, Alex's deck has 23 creatures, where Raphael's has 27. Alex's deck has way more planeswalkers. We're looking at nine yes. planeswalkers 
versus Raphael's only having one, and that's Domri Chaos Bringer, the one from Revnica Allegiance. Some key walkers in Alex's deck are Chandra Acolyte of Flame, uh, Chandra Flamecaller, the one that makes the two elemental tokens, uh, two Domri's, uh, a bunch of Garrick's, uh, some Vivian's, so... This is a little more Planeswalker token heavy, where Raphael's is just creatures that make tokens heavy. Yep. So, so the yeah, that, that that's definitely the big difference here, I think, between the two for sure. Look, looking at the two of them side by side, because um, there's even stuff in here like the removal spells are kind of things that generate tokens, like artifact mutation. So it's it's really leaning pretty heavily into that theme. Yeah. And I like both the decks. I think it's a pretty fun concept that looks like it makes no sense until you dig a little bit deeper and you're like, that's actually fairly clever. Yeah. All right. The uh, second to last one we have here on the list would be Croxa Extra Combat Step deck that was submitted to us by Cable. Um, so Croxa is the new Titan, Titan of Death's Hunger, um, who's an Elder Giant. He's a 6-6 six, six for black and red. So two mana for a 6-6. Six, six. That seems pretty good. When Crocs enters battlefield, sacrifice unless it escaped. And whenever Crocs enters a battlefield or attacks, each opponent discards a card. Then each opponent who didn't discard a non-land card this way loses two life. Then it has escape, black, black, red, red, exile, five other cards from your graveyard. So you have to cast it to have it wind up in your graveyard, basically. And then escape it to get it back into play. So that's a good amount of hoops to jump through, but it's a pretty interesting card, I think. It it's a very interesting card. All the all the titans are really yeah. both of all by I mean all, both. All both of them right. <laughs> <laughs> Escape scares me in commander, especially in a two color deck where you don't have a lot of ways to fill your graveyard fast. Sure, and especially one that that's going to nail you for five cards every time. Right. I mean, granted, this deck doesn't have any of like the true fetch lands, but if I wanted to eventually tune this deck, I'd have to kind of break my moral code of running off color fetches. Sure. Just to, you know, kind of make it's sure fit, I have yeah. some fodder in my graveyard and on yep. the off chance I don't draw a Sundial of the Infinite uh, in my opening hand. But there are a lot of cool cards in this deck. You know, there's Lifeline. Whenever a creature is put into a graveyard and a creature is in play, return the creature from your graveyard to play at the end of turn. So it's a way to essentially loop Kroxa yep. constantly. So that's a lot of fun. There are some extra combat steps like that was mentioned. Yeah, there's Aggravated Assault, which we mentioned, but there's Fury of the Horde, there's Relentless Assault, there's Seize the Day, there's Worlds at War, so there's, you know, about six different ways to get an extra combat step out there. Otherwise, there's just, um, you know, a bunch of creatures just to, you know, do some damage. Infernal Titan, uh, Draxus, Maw of Flames is in here, so on the off chance you can't keep Crocs out, you have just big beaters to yep. get through. All right, what is the last option we have here? The last option was submitted by Zach Strobin, and it's a Xenagos God of Revels deck uh, from the original Theros block. Uh, three green red for a legendary enchantment creature god. Uh, Xenagos is indestructible, and if my devotion to red and green is not is mo- less than seven, he's not a creature. And then at the beginning of my combat, on my turn, another target creature I control gets haste and plus X plus X until end of turn where X is that creature's power. So it's essentially a overwhelming stampede for a single body with no trample and it gives the thing haste that's a pretty big deal too because you can't ever quite be prepared if this is if Zenagos is in play you could just get domed and lose next turn yeah um what you don't realize is there's a lot of stuff with infect in this deck there is yeah and i and i think uh i think zach's going off the fact that i mentioned way back that at one point i did try to build this red green infect deck with Zenagos. And I think I probably even mentioned during that show that I would contemplate trying again, but you know, it's in fact it's so once you show your cards, right? You be better be ready to fight for your life. Yeah, there's a, there is a few things here that do that do deal with in fact in fact creatures like Phyrexian Hydra, uh, Putrefax. There's Triumph for the Hordes, obviously things like that. Um, it isn't the main way the deck's going to win, but there's there's quite a few of them in here giving you that option. Blight Steel obviously just is going to kill somebody. This one's interesting too. Um, you know, I've seen Xenagos decks are still pretty popular just because it's the win conditions there on your commander. Very much so. But um, I, I like this one as well. This one would be fun to play, I think. I I love the land base in this deck. It's 26 forests, 8 <laughs> mountains, yeah. and the Urza lands. Yep. 
Yeah, so one it. of each Urza land. That's that's insanely weird. Um, but there's a lot of ways to get the lands too. There's a lot of ways you can go and find them. So that helps yeah. you have a better chance of actually hitting that combo. All right, Max. So we've briefly kind of did a synopsis of these. So one, two, three, about 12 decks. Yeah, 10 or 12 decks. Yep. Um, and we'll make sure there's links to these in the show notes for people yes, to look we'll at. Yes, we'll put them out so. there, particularly on Twitter, and we'll probably put them in the notes on, you, on YouTube as well. Yeah. So yeah, you can go check them out and see if anything catches your eye. But you in the listener sense, how about you in the max sense, what are, is jumping out at you? Um, so first, I do want to say thank you to everybody who participated yeah. in this, and I'm sure we will do it again. I, Chris was intrigued with the idea. He I'm was. sure he'll yep. he'll eventually do this as well, and maybe Dana, you will too. I'm not forcing you to, oh, but I'm just ter- throwing it ter- out there. Terrified at the possibility that someone's just going to give me like the most popular commander ever. <laughs> <laughs> you mean Atraxa? Yeah, there we go. Um, so I want to say thank you again to everybody who participated and followed the guidelines. I really appreciate yeah. it. Um, when I looked at all the decks the first time through, which was about a week ago, just to kind of when the document got put together, um, I was intrigued by all of them. And then looking through them again today, the one that really the one that really speaks to me is the Grumgully decks. Um, but I think I'm gonna go with Raphael's version of it. Okay. Because it's more creature focused than planeswalker focused. And you like the option of of playing the more creature based deck. I do. Um I think this is it's it's kind of what I want to do. I don't have an aggro deck. Um this is gonna do it. It does make tokens, but I don't think it's gonna be where I feel compelled enough to retweak Regnan Krav. Right. And it just plays a lot of my favorite cards. There's a season pass. There's a Warstorm Surge. You know, there is a si- a maybe board where I could put in like a Jaya's emulating Inferno just for a big win, you know, if I wanted to. But so I think this is the deck I'm going to go with. Uh, I'll get it put together. I think my goal is to have it built, sleeved up, and ready to play by the second week of February. Oh, nice. That's pretty um, quick. Because I want to take it to Austin when I go visit Zach oh, from Commander Social. Good call. So that's the weekend it's really going to get the reps in, is that, right. that second weekend of February. Good to hear. Um, I also want to say thank you to Alex Cook. He kind of uh, helped organize this all. He put the Google Doc together. He kind of organized all the decks that got put together in the chat. So I just want to say a big thank you to him for doing that for me and for us by kind of staying on top of everything. Uh, yes. Big, big help to us. Thanks to everyone who participated in this as well. It was it was fun to see people just like madly brewing decks in our chat channel. And it got people to work together. They That's did. What I yeah, really they liked. were. Like, they were. Like at one point, like three people were like, hey, let's all go work on a Lysolda list together. And someone else was like, hey, let's go do Grumgully. And, you know, it was cool to see everybody kind of work it together yeah. and figure out a way to make it so I can still play a deck I like, yet it is still kind of trolly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now, this, this one, I think, particularly kind of is a good mix of being a deck. People are like, what is happening here? But it's also an effective deck. It's it's interesting. It's different. It's not going to look like anyone else's Grum Gully deck. Um, I think it's a good choice, and I'm looking forward to seeing you play it. Awesome. All right. I think that will wrap this show up. It's going to be a little bit shorter since we since we're, we don't have Chris here, and we didn't want to just read cards off a deck list. So this one will be a little bit short. I want to say that next week, because people have been asking, next Monday, we will be doing our Rifties show. Yes, we we wanted to wait till Chris was back. We were actually going to do it this week until he got sick. So we yes. wound up pushing that back until next week. So next week we'll be doing the Rifties, looking at the our favorite cards and award winners from, from 2019. Perfect. Very good. All right. We'll be back also on Thursday. We took a couple weeks off doing the decks you play on Thursday episodes. So we'll be back with one of those this week as well um you can find me on twitter at dana roach you can find max on twitter at cmdr central underscore max you can find chris at why squishy one our show is edited by rafael garcia you can find him on twitter at urza bear walker our podcast theme is retro future dirty by kevin mcleod and we'll be back next thursday with another show until then i'm dana and i'm max 